We will now look at some of the PROC enhancements. The first statement we'll look at is web message. Web message simply allows you to present a RIA dialog box with the message you enter. It supports the different levels of info, error, warning. Here I've got a retrieve statement and if I find no records, I'll present the message no records found. So if I run this page, a normal retrieve finds details. If I put in a profile that isn't going to match, I get my error message currently with the info icon. If I go back to my code, changes to error, for example, recompile, try my retrieve again, I now get the cross. The next statement I'll demonstrate is dollar field properties. Dollar field properties will allow me to dynamically change the widget properties and this includes all of the new attributes. To identify the name of the property, you can just look at the physical name of the property on the widget. So if I go to the attribute widget, we have this background color property that I set earlier. If I look at the physical property name, it's set to style colon background color. So that's the field property I need to change. What I'll do is change that property when I use the buttons. So I go dollar field properties at one style colon background color equals and I'll change it to red. If my retrieve's okay, I'll change it to green. When the clear button's pressed, I'll go for yellow. And if the store's pressed, I'll go for silver. Okay, if my retrieve fails, it's changed to red. If I hit clear, it changes to yellow. If I have a successful retrieve, it's changed to green. And if I do a store, it's changed to silver. The last part I will demonstrate is the call trigger operation and the call trigger proc statement. If we look in the operations trigger, we have call trigger as an operation. This is a standard operation that's called when events are fired on the client side. At this stage, two triggers are supported by the beta version. These are on change and detail. Using the function call trigger allows you to call a uniface trigger from proc code. This supports a subset of the uniface triggers and these are documented in the manual. The detail trigger is supported but value changed is not. So in this case, I've added some specific code to deal with the on change event. And what you can see here is I've got a field called DT1, so date one. And when that value's changed, I'm going to output a web message. So I need to paint this field DT1. So I'll add a new field. Go to the properties, to date picker, and we can see that it has a property on change for the on change event in the triggers, and it's an async update. Again, physical property name, trigger, on change. So I now need to put this field onto the layout. 
again, right click, copy as HTML, pick the individual field, okay, go to my layout and paste. So my date picker is now pasted on the layout. I compile and test. I click on the field, change the value, I get web, web message. We can watch the behavior of the triggers if we use the debugger. Okay, so we can see it goes into the get state trigger first of all. It then calls the call trigger operation. And in this case, my trigger name is on change and my field name is the DT1. So I'm going into my specific code that I added to call trigger. There's my web message. I return. Go through the set state trigger. And there's my message. If I hit one of the buttons, So clear, for example, we can see it goes into get state. The trigger name in this case is detail. The field name is clear button. So it calls the proc statement call field trigger, trigger name, field name. And we can see it's gone into the detail trigger of the clear button. We will now look at the extended triggers. In this original example, I showed some bespoke code to deal with the on change event. However, it is not necessary to do it this way. Instead, I can use the extended triggers of the field. If I remove this code, go to my date field and go to the extended triggers, I can define an extended trigger to handle the on change event. So I say trigger on change and end and place my web message into this extended trigger. If I compile and test, We get the same effect. If I launch the debugger, we can see we go into my get state, into call trigger. This time I'm just calling the standard call field trigger function, passing in on change and the field name, and we can see it's gone to the extended trigger on change. This is a far more efficient way to code this type of behavior. Thank you.